Who's touching people right now? Get up, I'm out of time. I can't take that. upgrade but the good news is you can do it next week you can get up here huh you can get up here why not if I was you I would if I was you I would John 5 19 <laughs> then answered Jesus and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but only by the Father. But only by the Father. Do you know that Jesus could do nothing until he got the Holy Spirit? Where's the stories? He was a carpenter's son. Huh? What did he, how did he get the Holy Spirit? How did he get the fire, the power? He had to pray and fast. He had to pray and fast. He had to. He had to. Had to. The way that Jesus walked in signs, wonders, and miracles was not because he was the Son of God. Not because he was the Son of God. They asked him, well, are you the, are you the king of the Jews? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. See? That's why they called him the son of man, not the son of God. He even referred to himself as the son of man. He came here intentionally just like someone like you. 
And that's good for us because we can learn some lessons. Okay? We can learn some lessons from that. The thing that he had was more discipline than most all of us. He had more discipline. Okay? He had more discipline. He knew where he came from, but he didn't come with that. He had to seek. He had to seek the Holy Spirit. He had to pray. He had to fast. Over and over and over in Scripture, it says Jesus had to get up early praying and fasting. He had to go to an isolated place. He had to go to desert places. It says he got up and he went to the mountain places. Praying and fasting and seeking God. Well, why would you do that? That's it. That would seem kind of, kind of worthless if you already had the power of God. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? So he was dependent upon relationship with God. He was dependent upon being able to go from here up into the throne room of God. Up into the throne room of God. He operated in a dimension called Kairos. That's my key to the anointing. Moving into the dimension, into the spiritual dimension of Kairos. And most of you probably don't know what I'm saying. Because most people fail from operating in the spirit level of chronos. Chronos. Chronological time. Chronological time. It's human time. It's like, chronos is like saying, next Thursday at one o'clock, I have an appointment. See? Next month, next month, in the third week of the month, I'm gonna. Mm. See? This is Kronos. This is, this is Earth time. You can only change events in earth time if you don't, if you don't get into Kairos and you stay in Kronos. The only way to change that time is through human effort. I could change my appointment. Instead of next Thursday at 3, okay, I can call and change my appointment for 1 with my phone. I can operate in the flesh. You see? I can operate in the flesh. That's Kronos time. And that's where most believers operate, in Kronos. But to be successful, in the things of God, in the anointing, you have to get from Kronos to Kairos. Kairos is God's time. It's the Spirit. And in the Spirit, there is, in the spirit, there is no time. It's like you say, well, one day is 24 hours, but to God, one day is as a thousand years. Do you see? Kairos is actually mentioned 86 times in the Bible. I bet you've never really read it. The references. Kronos is talked about 
54 times so that you, you can see talking about God's time is mentioned much, much more than the times of human, the times of the earth. Jesus, for instance, said, to give you a little clue, it's Jesus came to the people who are operating in Kronos, human times, the religious pastors. He said, you fools. You can discern the Kronos, the things of the world. You say, red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky at morn, sailors be warned. See, they can discern the chronos, the signs in the human world. But he said, but you fools, you cannot discern the times, the timing of God, the things of God. If I can learn, if you can learn, to move out of Kronos, out of the dimension of Kronos, and move into the dimension of Kairos, into the level of the spirit, the spirit controls everything, either good or bad. There's many kinds of spirits, right? But if you can start to learn to move down from down here where you're at in Kronos, in human dimension, and you can start to move up into the dimensions of God, you can begin to change and affect things in the world things that are being controlled spiritually. And the deeper that you start to go and learn about these things, the more you're going to start to realize everything is controlled by spirit in the world. Everything. Everything, whether good or bad, it's all controlled by the spirit. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. He's the way. But you have to have the truth. It also says that Jesus is the door. He is the door. And no one can come to the Holy Father except for through him. Because he is the door. He is the doorkeeper and the door holder to Kairos from Kronos. <clears throat> you can't get to Kairos into the dimension, into the spiritual dimension of Kairos. You can't get there without going through the door because the dimension is on the other side of the door. If you do not pray through the door, your prayers will not be answered. If you don't get through the door, I like to say this, you have to go through the door to get to the door. You have to go through the door to get to the door because Jesus is the door you have to get through and you have to get to the door of the throne room of God. That is the way. The Holy Spirit is your intercessor. You can get the gift of speaking in tongues, different gifts of tongues, warrior tongues, seeking tongues, worshiping tongues, or you can just worship. If that's all where you're at. But you have to get through the door. You can only get through the door by seeking the Lord in quiet time, in solitude, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, because we know the scripture says, and then Jesus, listening 
to the words of their heart. So you're speaking, 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 speaking in chronos, and it's not reaching God. I know people argue with this, but listen to the ones, not just me, but listen to those who understand it. Not your opinion. Everybody on earth has an opinion. I'm talking about experience. I'm talking about things that will work, not theories. I'm not preaching theological theories to you. You have to get, you have to convince Jesus to open the door. And he's not going to open the door. It says, then the foolish virgins came. Lord, Lord, open the door. He said, I won't open the door for you. You don't have oil. You have no oil. You have to have oil to get to the door. And the oil is the Holy Spirit. A full lamp. You come with a full lamp. Many will come in the last day saying, Lord, Lord. He said, no, I won't open. I don't know you. You are still in iniquity. This is why we need deliverance. This is why we need to get clean and ready for the master's use. Getting through the door is not a cheap experience. I honestly believe this, and people will argue it, and maybe you don't agree. That's up to you. But I, but I, honestly, I honestly believe this. If you can't get through the door, you can't get your prayers answered. Why do you want to go to God? Well, people want to go to God because they want something. So you have to be careful not to ask amiss. You see? Look. My Bible is over there. You see? If I want that Bible, I can't get it right here. I can't get it where I'm at. It's not available right here. You see? The things that I want and seek is not here. So what's the point of seeking it here when it's not here? I need to get to where it is. I need to get where I can get what I need. You see? And that's a journey from Kronos to Kairos. And you have to be able to get through the door. I honestly believe this. If you don't spend time with God, quality time, deep quality time, seeking, your prayers can't get there. Your prayer cannot get there. It can't make it talks about the second heaven. The second heaven supposedly is where the principalities and the powers, spiritual wickedness, these spirits of the air operate. So they're between you, they're between you and the third heaven, which is where God is. Paul even talked about, Paul talked about this. This is why Methodists, you know, the Methodists, that comes from the meaning the method, the method and the Methodist will tell you that the method is you have to pray it through. If you're going through a trial, they go, pray it through, brother. Pray it through. Pray it through. Pray, pray it through what? Pray through the second heaven. Now, it doesn't... If you don't agree with that, that's okay. But for me, I think I pretty much know it for a fact. For me. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to get rid of the things between you and Jesus. The things that are blocking good relationship between you and Jesus. Do you see? 
because you have to convince Jesus to open the door. Because what you want is up there in the third heaven. Jesus said, of myself I can do nothing, but only through my Father. He said that. So if you're down here in Kronos, you have to make it from here to, to Cairo, see? To the Father. You have to get to the Father where the things are. It's the same theory when they left Egypt and they said, you got to fight all these things. You got to get rid of all the enemy in all these areas. You got to get clean the land of Canaan. You got to get rid of the giants and this, that, and the other thing. And you have to make it all the way to Jerusalem because that's where the Jebusites are. You had to do all these other ites down there in preparation to get to the gate. Because Jerusalem was where all the promises were. That was what God was talking about, the promised land. You see? And all the promises were there, which later would become the city of David, right? City of God. But the enemy's in there. You had to get in there. You had to get the things. You had to get what God promised you, and it took a fight. It took cleansing. It, it took removing things of the enemy, do you see? It's the same kind of idea. Back there is physical, and here is spiritual. But it's the same kind of idea. You have to repent and make straight the paths of God, change your life in a God-pleasing way. Get delivered of the things that are trying to hold you bound, and you build your relationship with Jesus. Do you see? And you spend that with quality time. You and Jesus, just like if you want a new boyfriend or girlfriend or best friend or you want to get married to somebody, you got to build the relationship, right? So you have to do that. Jesus had to do it. He had to do it. Jesus said, if I by the Spirit of God cast out demons, he cast out demons by the Spirit of God because he was always operating in the area of Kairos, not Kronos. From how much time he spent in Kairos by seeking the Father in private time. Do you see? You do this and you spend in your private time and then the other key is this that Paul said, pray without ceasing. I mean, you know, you can't pray every single moment, but mostly throughout the day, instead of listening to your stupid headphones, instead of playing with your stupid cell phone, instead of talking to all your backslider friends, whatever you do during the day, be speaking in tongues. Take a shower, speak in tongues. Cook in your lunch, speak in tongues. And I don't mean that loud. Where everybody's like, oh my God. What's... No. That ain't going to do it. Look. I'm speaking in tongues. It don't look like it, does it? I do that all day long. I can be in the mall, I can be wherever. I'm not begging God, oh God, please, oh God. No. I'm keeping myself as much as I can in Kairos and out of Kronos. Because in Kronos is where all, the, where all these demons are and all these people, people with the demons. I always tell people, when you go out to make some kind of deal or something, the first answer is going to be no, because everybody has demons now. And they're going to see you walking in, and you got the whole armor of God on, hopefully. See? 
you come in with some angels. Depending on how much you work, you go for God, the more angels going to be around you. You see, you might, if you're really going full portion with God and really serving him, you might walk in there with six or eight angels around you instead of just your regular old guardian angel. You see? Because you need more, so God will give you more. And those demons can see that. They see the armor. They see the angels. They can see the glow of your anointing. You see? And they're going to try and stop that. But if you're in Kairos, it's very hard to stop. I always tell people when I send them out, you know, I send Chris out or whoever, go take care of this, take care of that. And they go there and they say, no, I've already trained them. I, I've already trained these people and told them, to the remnant, no means yes. When Satan says no, that means yes to the remnant. And you can affect. These are being done to my spirits against you. So you can affect the spirit world by having the right good spirit. Do you see? Are you getting this? Look. <clears throat> Maybe because of a curse you have, you might be set up by demons to get run over by a jeepney next Thursday. It's already decided. You might think, well, how could that be? How, 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 wait, 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 how could that be decided? All these die early curses, there's many in the Bible. Die early curse. See? It's already predetermined. There's already been a court case in heaven for a curse to come. A curse without a cause cannot come. So if you have a curse on your life, Well, we could change that. We could change that. And when I say we, I mean me and Jesus. Jesus through me. It's all done in his name, but he's looking for someone to use. You see? And the ones that he's looking to use are those who operate in Kairos, in spiritual level of things. Spiritual people. Spiritual people. See, because I can say, in the name of Jesus, we come against that curse. Renounce that curse. Renounce the die early curse. See? In the name of Jesus, we renounce that. In the name of Jesus, I command that curse and any demon assigned to that to leave right now in the name of Jesus. And you start getting delivered. I just operated in Kairos. I cannot do that in Kronos. You see? So you can change your destiny. You can get things from God that you'll never be able to get operating here on, in the human sphere. You, you, you won't be able to get it because it's not here. How can you get it when it's not here? The things that you need of God are there with God. See? And you have to go get it. You have to go get your award, your reward, your award, your... See? You have to get it. And how are you going to get it if you can't get there to get it? And I know that goes against everybody's religion, because, oh, no, I just say, oh, God, uh, can you get me that donut over there, please? See? They are, they're on this wrong level here, on the human level. I also honestly believe that most prayers under one hour will not ever work. Now, I've seen some that did, so I'm not going to say every time. We were looking at the scripture last week where the disciples said, how come we couldn't cast out that big demon? He said, because you stopped praying and fasting. You became too overconfident. Start to backslide some. See, you're still walking with God. You're still going to the meetings, but you're not praying and fasting. Do you see? Do you see? And Jesus said, well, these big kinds, these, these harder cases, can only come, up, come out by prayer and fasting. So it's not that we go home and pray and fast. Oh, somebody came in with a 
harder case of a spirit, or it could be a deaf and dumb spirit. It, I think he's just talking about harder cases. You don't run home and pray and fast. Because by that time, the person will probably be gone and you missed the divine appointment with God. To meet the divine appointments with God that for yourself or you to be used to help others, you have to be in a constant state of kairos. Walking in the Spirit. See? Living in the Spirit. And that requires prayer and fasting times sacrifices deeper things to God that's why a lot of you you know you apostolic youth here you're starting to see that things are coming up aren't you now that you started this 3 a.m. 3 30 a.m. are you what yes. what yes. you really are yes. of course because it's a it's a biblical formula it's a biblical formula Look, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky at morn, sailors be warned. You failed to discern the times. Then we see this case where there's a big giant storm. And the sailors are out there halfway. And they want to give up and quit and go back. Because they're operating in chronos. There's a storm. There's a storm. It was already predicted by the weather. A storm front came in. The storm, right? Like the typhoons coming here. But Jesus goes out walking on the water because he operates in Kairos. Another time he's sitting in the boat. And the sailors are all going, we're going to die, we're going to die. And Jesus is sleeping in the boat. They're in Kronos. He's in Kairos. They start screaming, Lord, Lord, wake up, wake up. Aren't you afraid we're going to die? And Jesus sits up and he goes, I rebuke you. Stop it right now. And the sea goes flat. He's in Kairos in the place where you can affect the chronos. See? So if you, the more that you can get into this level of high level spirituality, of being in the presence of God, if you, if you don't like the word kairos, then that's complicated, just say the presence of God. The good spiritual things of God. Huh? You get it? That make sense? Staying home and doing a cheap help me, help me, give me, give me prayer will be rejected. For me, I mean, I, all I can tell you is like what I've learned works, not that I'm the grandmaster teacher, but I can just tell you from my own life, my testimony, what I know works. When I start praying, even like we did this morning, I never ask God for anything. I never ask him for nothing ever under any circumstance for at least an hour. Never. And the very first thing, I, thing that I say to God, Father, I give you praise and I come to you to bless you. I don't have one complaint about anything. And that's the truth. There's still things I'm trying to get or, you know, you know, hope to get that little pain thing that might come and go or whatever it is. Still seeking the Lord to get free from that. Still seeking deliverance from those little things, you know, that come and go, those kind of stuff. But I don't go with no complaint. Complaining keeps you in Kronos where the desert is. You can't get to Kairos by complaining because it keeps you in the desert with biting snakes, right? Numbers 30, right? Numbers 11 through all the way 30, all that. Right? 
The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Right? These are formulas. So I just start praying. First I do warfare tongues, warrior tongues, to get through everything the enemy is trying to do. I bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me pray. He's the intercessor. And I ask Jesus to lead me through the door. He is the door. In Jesus' name. Do you see? You got to get your things in order. And I ask Jesus be my, li my, my guide, my leader. See? Get me there. Take me there. You go with Jesus. Through Jesus. To get up through the gate and then through the gate and up into the throne room of God. That's, that's the only way that you can do it. But you can't ask for nothing. See, what's the point of asking for something Because God heard you. Because God knows. That's why he sent me over here. That's why he told me you. He said your name. He said your name. I heard him say your name. Because he knows. There it is. There it is. There it is, Father. I pray, anoint that, anoint that, anoint that, anoint that, anoint that. There it is. There it is. Go la ba Okay, there it is. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. In Jesus, I give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. I lift you up. You see, if you tune in to Kairos, you can hear the Lord speak to you. He can send you on special assignment. He knows. The Bible says he knows those who are his. He knows. Your names are written on the palms of his hands. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for encouragement, for the spirit of encouragement, for the spirit of encouragement, for the spirit of encouragement, Father, in the money. A touch! Touch! In the mighty name of Jesus, touch! To the glory of God, touch! Touch! Touch with encouragement. Touch. Touch. And the whole time I did ministry while we were building this church. The whole entire time because you're, you have to seek first the kingdom of God. You have to seek first the kingdom of God and then things will be added. But if a person will not work, they should not eat, the Bible says. The Bible says. Because God doesn't reward laziness and people who like to take a nap during the day. I'm 67 years old. I don't take no nap. I don't take no nap and I don't get tired and I don't complain. I do what needs to be done. And I can do it from the anointing. 
I can do it from the anointing, but number one, your job must be for the Lord in everything. In everything, the Lord must be first. Look. So the young boy took the money and he said, Well, I'm rich. I don't got to sit there and work anymore. I don't got to work on that stupid job anymore. I'm rich. And so he went out and he wasted all of his blessings living a demonic life, riotous living, crazy living, living it up like there's no tomorrow, but there is a tomorrow. And when he had spent everything, when he ran out of money, there came a famine in the land. You couldn't just go out and live off the fruit trees. There wasn't none. There was nothing. He began to get very hungry and he came to the place where he had nothing. And he went and joined himself to another person that was a worse boss than his job before. I always tell my students, you never leave your job. Even though you, you hate the boss, or you hate this, or you hate that, you never leave the job until you have another job. You don't leave the job until you have another job. Because you think, oh, I, I have another job. They already promised me out there. They, they told me I can start work next Wednesday, so I'm just going to quit today. But they're full of demons. They're full of demons. And then comes Wednesday, the job ain't there. Oh, well, I know I said, but the thing is, and now you don't have a job, and you ain't got no money. And now you're stuck. And many people get stuck like that for months. Going from one interview to the next, to the next, to the next, and everyone, there's a demon sitting there going, no, not you, no, not you. See, if you don't break your curses... It works against you. And if you're a lazy person, God's not going to reward you. Why would God give you a job that you have no intention of doing? I've done all kinds of jobs. Every kind of job you, you could ever imagine. I probably did it. I worked since I was 10 years old, full time. I've done every kind of thing. And I found that I can be happy in any job, even right now. If I, whatever, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, like, oh, if I ever left this job, because I love this job. But, <laughs> but if I did and I had to go do something, what would I care? I could work at SM City selling shoes. I could go to the supermarket and put the cans of corn and the cans of peas. And a job is a job for me. And people go, well, wouldn't that be so far below your level? I mean, look at all these great jobs you had. No, a job is a job. A job is a job. You never cry about what you lost. You rejoice for what you had. A job is a job. What do I, what do I care? It don't matter. I can, I can go up there, the toilets get plugged up and blocked up. I go up there and fix them. I go up there and work on them, don't I? Yeah. I can change all them parts. I can do all that. I'm not, oh, why let me have to clean the toilet? What do I care? A job is a job. I go work on the septic tank. Hey, work is work. Because the Bible says, do all things as unto the Lord. If you can see that the boss you think you have is not really your boss... He's somebody with a demon. But my real boss is the Lord. Then I can look at my job as a wonderful opportunity to witness to those people with demons. And I can be there stacking the cans of peas, speaking in tongues. 
I can be praying on the job the whole day, and I'm staying in Kairos. And God will bless me. My blessings don't come from my earth work. All blessings come from the Father of Lights. You have to get that. You have to get a hold of that. And in order to get a hold of that, you've got to break your curses and you have to stay in Kairos. Do you get this? This is an unusual talk. Okay? But do you get what I've been trying to say? Can you apply this? So he went and joined himself onto another boss, and the boss said, Go out and work, go out and take care of my pigs. Go out and take care of the pigs. And he was almost fainting because he had no food. And he's looking and he's seeing that the pigs eat more than me. The pigs get better than me. So he said, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll just eat the pig food. I'll steal from the pigs and I'll eat the pig food. So he tried, <laughs> so he tried eating the pig food, but can't do that. A human can't eat those things, corn husk. And no one would give to him. No one would bless him. No one would give him anything. <coughs> Why? Because all good gifts come down from the Father of Lights. For somebody to give you something, you have to have God affect them and speak to them even though they don't know it. And they give it to you. He told Elijah, when nobody had food, nobody had water, go over to that next town. I have already prepared a woman to give you something to eat. She had no idea. But God had already put it in her heart. And when she gave to the man of God in faith, it opened up a blessing too great to receive over her entire house. She, her, her and her family was saved. Do you see? In a seemingly impossible situation, she still gave to God. She still trusted God. And that's what brought the blessing. And he couldn't get anything. No one would give nothing to him. Verse 17. So when he came back to himself, he said, how many hired servants does my father have who are eating dinner right now? And if I stay here, away from the Father, I will perish. If I stay away from the Father, I will perish. Do you know what Father this is talking about? You know. This is talking about the Holy Father. This is a parable about the Holy Father of those who go away from God but still expect to get a blessing in Kronos. Look. So I said to myself, I will get up and I will go to my father's house and I will confess the sin. I have gone away from God. I will confess the sin. I have gone away from God and I have lost my favor. I have lost my blessing. And no one will help me because no one is touched by God to help me. They're only touched by demons to not help me. To not help me. So I went and I say, I will confess my sin, my sin against heaven. I sinned against heaven because I went away from God and I lived like a backslider and I became an irresponsible person. And I'm not worthy, I am not worthy, he humbles himself, to be called a son of God. So, give me a job to do, God. This is a good place to start. Good place to start. The Bible says, don't despise small beginnings. Ask God for a job. What can I do? The only thing you do for the first hour of prayer once you get through the Jesus door and you get up to the throne room of God, the only thing 
you say is, what should I do now? What do you want me to do? Talk to the Holy Father. What do you want me to do? And after a while, he'll start to tell you. If you stay in, in Kairos, he will start to speak to you, and he will start to tell you. Because the priority is what God wants you to do instead of what you want from God. God already knows the desires of your heart. When he asked Solomon, what is it you want? He says, I want wisdom and understanding to bring you glory and to help your people. And God said, because you didn't ask me to get your enemies, because you didn't ask me for money, I will take away your enemies and I will give you money. After giving you what you need to serve God and me seeing you do it. Don't ask get God for a spiritual gift if you're not going to use that spiritual gift. What's the point of speaking in tongues if you're never going to do something? So he arose and he went back to his father. And he, while he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and kissed him. And he said to his father, I have sinned against heaven. I have sinned against God. I have done wrong to you. But the father said, put him back in a good place. This is what God wants to do with you. He wants to put you in the good place. He wants to lift you up. But before God is going to come to you, you have got to go to him. Amen? Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Come on. In the time of your trouble, time of your need call upon the Lord and he will set you free on the dark dark road on the dark dark road of your life. Call upon the Lord in the time of your need. Call upon the Lord and he will set you free. Come forth, come forth, come forth. Come forth to the marvelous light. Come forth, come forth, come forth. Break your chain and set you free. Oh, God upon the Lord. God upon the Lord. God upon the Lord. In the time of your need. Oh, God upon the Lord. In 
the time of your trouble, call upon the Lord. He will give you double. Oh, he'll break your chain, break your chain, he'll break your chain. He'll break the chains off of thee. He'll break the chain, break the chain, break the chain. He'll break the chain and set you free. Say it. Break the chain, break the chain, break the chain, break the chain off for me. Break a chain, break a chain, break a chain, break my chain and set me free. Oh, break the chain, break my chain, break my chain, break my chain and set me free. Break my chain, break my chain, break my chain, break my chain and set me free. Chain right above 